Welcome to the Saperna Eyeglass Ransomware Defender demonstration. Saperna Eyeglass Ransomware Defender is a project that's under active development at Saperna and is the next big thing we see coming down the pipe. In this demonstration, we'll talk a bit about ransomware attacks, about how they can affect users and organizations, and about how Saperna Eyeglass Ransomware Defender can help to protect you and your organization against a ransomware attack. A ransomware attack is a form of malware that infects a user's machine and encrypts the files on the user's directories. The means to decrypt those files can only be obtained by purchasing a decryption key from the attacker. The common ransomware variants are smart, however, and they encrypt files not just on the user's local machine, but also on mapped and unmapped network shares. This can create significant issues in an organization if a user encrypts shared files that are accessed by many different people. Saperna Eyeglass Ransomware Defender can protect against these types of attacks by monitoring file access patterns on the cluster and revoking access to users when they exhibit malicious behavior. In this demonstration, we'll simulate a user who has been infected with Locky, which is the most common ransomware variant at the time of this demonstration. The user will begin to encrypt files and we will see Eyeglass take action against that user and prevent him from writing any more files on the cluster. On the right, we have our Eyeglass desktop, and we also have our Isilon cluster, managed through 1FS. On Isilon, we have a share named Locky1, and a user named KyleTest1, and this user has write access to the share, though he is not a root. In Windows, we've mounted this share using our normal file browser and mapped it to the Z drive. The share has some data in it, most notably an encrypt function that simulates the encryption of the Locky virus. In fact, it actually encrypts files using 7-zip and renames them in the same way as Locky does. We also have some data in the directory. In the test data, we have a bunch of different Java files. These are different text-based files with different sizes. As you can see, most of them are quite small. The directory listing is down in my command prompt in the right. I'm going to switch to the iGlass desktop now and we'll look for the notifications coming through the window, indicating that a ransomware attack has been detected and that Eyeglass has taken action against the user who has initiated this ransomware attack. From my command prompt, I will execute the simulated ransomware function, encrypt.bat. And as I do this, it will start encrypting files one by one. As we'll see, Eyeglass will detect this usage pattern and will take action against my user, blocking the user from encrypting any more files. The first file is being encrypted, RabbitMQ Consumer. And you can see already, Eyeglass has detected this access pattern. And now, even though my function is still trying to encrypt files, I get access denied errors as I go through the directory. In my share up at the right, I no longer have access if I try and access the test data folder. You can see Windows cannot access this anymore. At this point, an administrator is notified and iGlass will provide a means to reinstate the user. For now, my user is locked out. The administrator knows and the administrator can take action and re-enable the user on this network share as soon as the infection on the user's computer has been cleaned. Eyeglass does not just take action against this one cluster. Eyeglass can manage many different Isilon clusters and many different shares. Should a user be exhibiting malicious behavior, Eyeglass can take action not just on the cluster that the user has started to infect files or encrypt files, but on all of the clusters in a user's environment. This provides excellent protection against any ransomware attacks. This is the end of the demonstration. Thank you for your attention. If you'd like to know more about the Saperna Eyeglass Ransomware Defender, please contact support at saperna.net. Thank you.